Hi, this is the last project. I'm going to sh show you how to throw a teapot. <clears throat> Some considerations. A teapot's a challenge. You have to make the body of the pot. You have to make the spout. You have to make the handle and the lid. They all have to work together. A good teapot generally is round because the tea circulates as it brews. The lid works best if it has a deep flange on it like this. Because when you tip it, it's not going <clears> to <throat> come off. The spout should taper like a funnel, so it forces that liquid into a smaller and smaller spot till it pushes it out. This final leading edge needs to be sharp so it catches that last drip. Sometimes you can cut it off and it cuts the press pressure a little bit and it'll pour even better. You can make a teapot and have lug handles and a cane handle on it. They can be any size. So here's a small one. See the flange? Tapered spout. Low center of gravity on the, on the lid so it doesn't come off as you're tipping it. And the round shape and a handle that balances it well. Okay, this is two and a half pounds. This will make quite a large teapot. So you throw it just like you throw a vase or a cover jar. Decide whether you want to have a foot. It depends on how far you go down. Compress and lift up the walls. This will seem like a pretty large teapot. Remember, everything shrinks about 12%. So it's going to lose some of the size in the firing. Bring the top in just enough. I can still get my hand into it. And I'm going to define that top lip. I like to make the lip a little bit thicker. It gives it a little more substance up there than the rest of the body. I'm going to stretch it out to be round now. 
from the inside, from the top down, with a rib. Use the rib to refine the outside shape. And bring the neck in just a little bit. One smaller opening here. Remember, I have the handle that's going to be coming off of it. I don't want the opening to be so big that it gets in the way of the handle. I'm leaving this a little bit raised so that way this will be unglazed and I can glaze all the way up to the top of the shoulder. Do a trim. Now I'm going to measure. I'm going to measure the inside diameter here so I can make the lid. There, perfect. Okay. Then for the lid, I'm using two calipers. You could use a ruler, so I just need to bring these. the same size
and that's how big I need to make the lid. I'm going to throw the spout and the lid off the hump. Now, you're certainly welcome to throw it on the wheel head. I find it's more efficient to small, throw small things off the hump. So I've got my large piece of clay. It's wedged. I roll it around like that to get the bottom smooth and to dome it so when I put it down I won't trap any air down there. Okay, I'm going to start by throwing the lid. ball of clay. Now I want the opening to be this wide. So I'm going to keep measuring as I go. I'm going to grab a little ball of clay off. Put my finger there. So now I've got that much clay ready to go. Open. And bring it out. Okay, that's about right. Now when you throw off the hump, remember make sure you compress a lot because you're pushing against soft clay versus the hard wheel head. So, now I'm going to angle in. And take my fingers and make a wedge. So the clay's kind of like that. That's about what I want. So now, use your fingers like scissors. And you just push down, supporting it on the other side with your outside middle finger. Check. Yep. Finish throwing this. Now, look at this. It tapers like a cork. You want it to fit right down here in the corner. So that's where the calipers should go. Now, it's all right to have a little bit bigger and then you'll be able to trim it to size but a sign of a good potter a sign of a good teapot is a nice fitting lid pretty tall flange I'm gonna finish throwing the outside I want this to go down a little bit so I don't see the unglazed clay where the lid fits into the pot. So I'm just going to bring this out just a little bit and up. Mark where I want to cut it off. And I'm using the wooden knife and I'm putting it the point first and going in towards the center. I'm going to catch it with my two fingers. Chamois that edge. I want to make sure that's nice. There. So, 
put it into the groove, and aim for the center, and you pick it up. It's a good thing to dry your lid with your teapot. Okay, let me throw a spout now. Now the spout should be wider at the bottom and then narrow like a funnel. So this is a pretty good sized teapot, so I'm going to make it pretty wide at the bottom. And remember, you do slice it a lot. You don't want a, a little narrow bottom coming out of the teapot. You want something substantial, and then you want it to taper into a nice, small opening. Now, since I'm cutting the bottom out of this, I don't need to worry about compressing. But I'm going to mark where the bottom is with my thumbnail. And I'll finish throwing this. And all the pressure is on the outside. I'm supporting it on the inside so the clay goes in. time. Now a bad spout flares out. You want to make sure the narrowest point is at the tip. So collar it by putting your fingers in a triangular shape down below and coming up to the top. Now you don't want it just straight cone like this. You want some kind of spout happening. And then when you do this, what happens is this area will get thick. So you come back in and throw it some more. You can use your fingers. Well, a good thing to use is the end of your needle tool or a dowel or a round paintbrush. And you just put the tool in, bring it against the side, and then bring the clay up against the, the tool. This does two things. Besides acting like a finger on the inside, it smooths the inside of the spout neck. And that way, it will pour better. rib and shape this. See how it tapers from wide and the narrowest point is up at the top. I'm going to trim the very tip and I'm trimming it at an angle. That way it'll trap catch that last strip there and won't roll around the outside edge. You want that inside edge to be sharp. Uh, this is where the bottom of the spout was, so I'm just incising it with the edge of the stick and then putting the stick in and cutting it off and let the spout dry with the teapot at the lid. Now it's always a good idea to make more than one lid, more than one spout, more than one teapot and then you can mix and match and get it so it works really well together. It's always difficult putting more than one piece together so if you have more choices, the better they'll come out. So make a bunch of teapots. I'm sure you'll enjoy doing it.